All right. So today, we're going to be working on an A1502 that probably turns on that at this rate. This is the fourth one in this stream, so I hope that this doesn't turn on. If this one also turns on, then fuck it. I'm just quitting and going home for the day. There's only so many machines I can get where it says no power. I open it up, I take everything out, and it already works before I just start to feel like I'm just useless. So let's open the bottom of this machine and see if it is uh, turning on or not. For those of you who are confused what I say when I said that on stream, I do have a live channel as well. I record my live streams in a higher quality, and then I edit out the interesting tidbits for the main channel. But if you'd like to watch all the stuff that I record and post, even the boring, crappy, shitty outtakes, you can check out the Lewis Rossman Random Live channel. Let's open this up. It just, if this turns on, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna break its CPU in a little bits and pieces and leave it for Paul. I'm gonna rip the PM Sleep S4L right out of this board and donate it to a board that actually needs it. So here, it's going from 20 milliamps to 60, 20 to 60, 20 to 60. Now what this tells us here, when you see that the milliamps are going from 20, 70, 20, 60, 20, 60, 20, 60, what this number tells me up here is that it's power cycling. It's trying to turn on, it's failing to turn on, usually because one of the rails is shorted. So our job here is gonna to be to figure out which rail that is that is shorted. So let's switch over to the schematic in the board view. And we're going to see using Paul Daniels' lovely software here, if we can find the page that lists all the different power rails, then we're gonna go through them methodically and figure out which one is there, which one is missing, which one is shorted. Now, PP3V4 2 underscore G3 hot needs to be present in order for you to get a light in the charger. We do get a light in the charger, so I don't need to check for that. There's other rails I also don't need to check for, like PPDCM. PP3, uh, PP3V4 2 needs to be present to have a light in the charger. And obviously, in order to have PP3V4 2, you have to have the DCM. So, in order for a board a voltage to be present on this board, it needs to be getting power from the DCM. This has to be present before anything on here can work. So that, I already know, you know, before doing any other work is present. So now what we got to do is go through the rest of this board and see what we have on it. Oh, like a board view. Uh, next up is going to be our Peepee Bus. A Peepee Bus G3 Hot. So we look at Peepee Bus G3 Hot over here. Let's see what we get. 13 volts. Actually, let's just fix the range on this meter so that it's more accurate. 12.5 or 12.2? 12.63 volts. Peepee Bus G3 Hot is good. SMC's working. Thank you very much, Prodigy. I appreciate that. PPVRTC is present. I know you're busy, but I ain't using the 1 million subscriber party location. 1 million subscribers is not coming for longer than I thought. We're only getting a few hundred a day now, so I have some time to think about it. I have no... We were going to do two parties. I think what we're going to do is one uh, that... We're going to have one on the day that we actually hit a million. It's going to be a, it's going to be a meetup group that I arrange spontaneously. It's not something I can be pre-planned because I don't know what day it's going to be probably at an arcade around here, and then there's going to be an official 1 million subscriber party. I have no idea where we're going to hold that one just yet. That's going to be one where we announce the date in advance, and we give people a chance to make plans and show up, but that, so we're going to have two separate ones. All right, next up, PPVRTC is there. We're going to check out PP5VS5, which can be found down here. It's 5 volts and going on and off. Look at that. It's going on. Going off. Going on. Going off. Now let's take a look at that area on the schematic in the board view now, shall we? This over here is our 5-volt regulator. Now this chip is responsible for creating three different rails. PP3V3S5. It creates PP5VS3. And it also creates pp 5 v S5 LDO. So I check PP5 ES5 LDO and it's pumping up and down. So the first thing I want to do there is see if there's a short to ground on that rail. Probably not, but you never know. Let's just see if there is. No short to ground. 15 million ohms, that is far from a short. Now what you have to keep in mind is that this chip is responsible for three rails. So even if the rail that is that's jumping up and down is not shorted, the chip could still be to blame if one of its other rails are shorted. So we're going to check out and see what's present 
at PP5 ES3. Let's see if that rail is shorted. Because if any of these rails are shorted, then everything this chip does is not going to work. So imagine this chip over here, the TPS51980, is responsible for three power rails. So even if one of those power rails is shorted, it doesn't mean all of them are going to not work properly because the chip is getting hurt by it. It's like, ow, it's like being punched in the face over and over again. So if I were petting my kitty with one hand and I was playing a video game with the other hand, if you stab my left hand, it's not just the video game I'm playing that's going to be affected. I'm, all, I'm also not going to be able to pet my kitty anymore. Even though you didn't stab my right hand, both of these hands share in common that they're attached to a person with the same brain. And if this brain is going, oh my god, I got stabbed! Ah, 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 I'm not going to be able to do anything. And the same is true here. The reason that PP5 ES5 is jumping, even though PP5 ES3 is the rail that's shorted, is because they're both being made by the same chip. So now we have to figure out why PP5 ES3 is shorted, which means looking around the board for all the things that it's attached to. So I am going to load this up here. We're going to click on PP5 ES3. And now Paul Daniels' lovely software is going to show me everywhere that it goes. And we're going to see if anything on this line appears to be clearly and obviously damaged. So let's go for it. We're going to have to find the short. What do I need to do basic logic board repairs? Uh, the first thing you need is a brain. The second thing you need is a soldering iron. The third thing you need is a hot air station. And I'm probably going to have to inject voltage. Nothing is getting obviously warm. Oh, oh, ho! Oh. What's this? I see something getting warm here. Is there any PP5 ES3 over there? Is there any PP5 ES3 over there? There is not. There is... Oh, PP5 ES... Oh, audio amp is over there. And PP5 ES3 on this XW thingy. Hmm. I think I know what it is. It's going to be this shit that's pulsing over here. See that? When I hit the Chinesium button, that's how you get the software to show you the hottest point on the board. So is it this? This is my tweezer. I think it's this. Let's see if that's what it is. I'm going to remove that from the board. Just gonna unplug power for a moment. Now a part of the capacitor was left behind after I removed it. So check this out. This is a hint. See that? See how the leg of the capacitor is all broken off? And if you look over here, you can see how after I remove the capacitor, it's not just the leg stayed behind, but there's this brownish stuff over here. This section looks burned. Let me just get my exposure up on my camera. So see this? That's not your normal metal coloring over there. That looks burned, and that looks like a burn happened. So that's evidence that before I even do any other work here, that that was before I even measure with the multimeter to see if my short's removed, I know that my short's removed because that looks like something that would have been my short. So now these boards, unlike many other PC boards, cool themselves very quickly. MacBooks have no cooling, so it's very, very important that the MacBook board be able to absorb and dissipate ridiculous amounts of heat because you can't trust this little piece of shit heatsink and fan setup that they have to do any work. On these machines, this fan doesn't start spinning until you've gone into the 80 to 90 Celsius range. So on the newer models, I think 70 to 80 on the older ones. Uh, no update, as I think I said 10 minutes ago, but I appreciate it. Thank you very much for the 199. No update, zero update. Uh, pretty much where I was before. The spontaneous event will probably be at a barcade, and then there will be a second event after at a predetermined, at a to-be-determined location. Uh, this over here, this fan, does this, this heat sink does not really do much. This fan also does not really do much. So the board itself absorbs an insane amount of heat. So I can actually turn this on right uh, now. 
you know, it cools off faster than most of the boards. I am going to turn the amperage readings on on the screen and let's see if this thing turns on. As you can see, it is taking 600 milliamps, which means that it is working. Now the fan is not going to spin because what if people donated to a GFM in return, they would get their name printed on that glass wall you plan on doing. That's something I'm considering, honestly, brew ho ho. Now this fan is not going to spin on this because this is a MacBook. This thing needs to get to like 70, 80, 90 degrees before this fan will do anything. But it is taking 500 milliamps, which means it is turning on, which means that we have cleared our short. Now I'm going to replace that capacitor with another capacitor, and then this board will be fixed. And after that, we will be ready to do another board. This Please Bro camera is pleased and pleasing. It is. Please Bro camera is actually... Uh did not, didn't do a bad job today. And usually, to find the short, I have to inject voltage in. On this one, the short was actually showing up without me showing voltage in, even though the power rail was turning on and off and on and off and on and off and power cycling. Even though it was power cycling, it was enough, just enough there for the thermal camera, the please bro camera, as I call it, to be able to pick it up. I call it a please bro camera because when people ask for solutions, that don't require using your brain, they always start their sentence with please bro or please madam in the YouTube comments. And it's and that ca that camera allows me to not use my brain. I don't have to figure out what's wrong. I just put the camera on there and whatever is hot, please bro. Thank you, Rob Brown. I appreciate that. That is very, very kind of you. Thank you. And I don't know if I deserve it, but thank you nonetheless. All right, so we do this, we do that, and we're going to get ready to solder a new capacitor onto this MacBook motherboard. So let's see what that capacitor was for, the one that was getting really hot that we just so happened to remove. It looks like that was C6412. C6412 is a capacitor for the audio amp on PP5 ESO. So most likely PP5VSO was shorted and PP5VS3 connects to there. So PP5VS3 was showing up as shorted even though PP5VSO is the rail that the actual short was on. Which means maybe the PP5VSO transistor was stuck open when the machine went off and I made my measurement. So that's interesting to see. And the way that I was able to ascertain from the very beginning that the likely issue was a short circuit is that it was power cycling. And the way I was able to tell that it was power cycling is by be reading the amp reading that it was giving me when it was turning on. So this is another important part of the troubleshooting process. I don't just use a normal MagSafe adapter. I p cut the ends off of my MagSafe adapter. You know, what I'll do is I'll take this MagSafe and I cut this and I plug this end into a power supply and then I use the power supply to power the actual board because the amount of power that it's taking is going to give me a clue. The same way that a diode mode reading to ground on backlight output is going to give me a clue. These are all clues and I want as many clues as I can so that I can use the, so that I can pinpoint the issue with the least amount of using my brain. You can help Alan on his YouTube, yes. And thank you very much for the $2. And uh, that is it for this stream. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, I hope that you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. I will try to make more time for these. I'm sorry, the real estate thing has not just been taking up a lot of my time dealing with brokers, realtors, attorneys, architects, contractors, designers, and trying to get everything together, and also while also trying to negotiate a price for myself on all these different things that's worthwhile. But honestly, it just kind of burns your brain after a while, and it takes me out of a mindset where I can work on stuff. You know, if I'm dealing with two or three different brokers or two or three different buildings or two or three different agents at the same time, trying to get a good deal on a property and dealing with all the garbage involved in New York City negotiating a space to get something remotely resembling a good deal, it does unfortunately take away from my ability to sit here and in a calm and relaxed manner work on boards. It's, it just sucks me into a different world that I have to live in in order to do that and that it doesn't make itself, um, it's not something that's amenable to explaining component level board repair in um, an educational fashion. But hopefully I'll have time to get back to that more since it looks like we are close to closing in on a space on 30th Street as long as my attorney reviews the lease and it's not filled with garbage. We are going to be moving full steam ahead with it. I got an architect on board, I got a contractor on board, and uh, we're gonna try and build ourselves an amazing space 
all I got to do now is get the uh, the electrician on board because I don't I don't want just anybody put you know dealing with uh, putting a 600 amp uh, system in there. We do have 600 amps available to my store, which is awesome. And there's a I think there's a 15 or a 20 a single 20 amp breaker for the entire store, which is I mean that, 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 that's a fucking joke. Uh, but it's um, that has to get changed out. And once that's changed out, once we get all the stuff going, it's going to be awesome. We're going to have a real store, a real office, a real business, and it's going to be cool. I've always wanted a real office. It's like, this close. Finally. Anyway, see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.